yes folks it's thursday 2 p.m pacific i'm fred mcmurray and somehow we got everything right today so this actually has to be still dancing around well it is time to get serious because we are on pillars of franchising and we have an exciting panel of guests today we've been looking forward to it all week oh my gosh for like the last two weeks and like last mm. week everyone was too busy eating turkey to even be on the air <laughs> i know i know well so we hope everybody had a happy thanksgiving um we have the titus center here with us today john hayes yeah. Um, head honcho of the Titus Center with two of his students. We can't wait to talk to them. They've oh been doing gosh. great things down there. Um, they've mm -hmm. got a lot of success with their students. They're placing them in jobs. Everything's going gangbusters. So we want to hear it from the students who are the ones that, who are the beneficiaries of his expertise in that area. So That's before we right. get started, because I forget this sometimes, I want to go ahead and remind everyone that we do call in. You can call mm -hmm. in. Um, to 323-580-5755. So if you have questions about the Titus Center or the next generation of franchising, um, be sure to let us know. Kristen, yes. word on the street. Lady. Speaking of the next generation of franchising, first of all, happy Friday Eve, my favorite, second to the favorite day of the week. Favorite day of the week happens to be tomorrow. Um, so queuing up for next month, and you mentioned the second generation of franchising, we were talking as a team on Tuesday about all the great things that franchising does, not just for the people in it now, but for the people of tomorrow, such as the students who are right now attending the Titus Center for Franchising, such as all the kids that are growing up watching their parents, and in some cases their grandparents, work in these franchising uh, systems and building these huge businesses, and in some cases not maybe so huge, but just great businesses that are allowing some spectacular lifestyles um, that they might want to take over when they get older. And so the whole month of December is really going to be meeting with some phenomenal young people who are growing up in franchising and talking about how franchising has provided a second generation, and in some cases a third generation, of opportunities opportunity. So franchising that just keeps on giving. And I think it's really exciting because most of us, or a lot of us, um, you know, we talk about beginning with the end in mind and how it's so important that you um, enter a business with having, you know, an exit strategy. And what does that look like? Is your goal to just cash out or is your goal to pass it on? What is it that you want to do? And so that's what we're going to explore for all of you who might be out there thinking about buying a franchise. You got to think about what you're going to do when you're ready to either age out, cash out, go live on a beach, which is my my goal. Um, you know, what's the plan? Yeah, well, and it's a great way to build generational wealth. Um, and I, I think that it's not recognized enough. Um, and so over the next few weeks, um, John coming on with his students um, kind of inspired our series for the month of December which is the gift that keeps on giving franchising and the second generation um, empowering second generation leaders or next generation, you could be third generation. Um, so next week we're gonna have Jerry Akers of Great Clips, his daughter on with a couple of panelists. They're gonna talk about her experience um, growing up with Jerry and, and now being actively involved in the business. Um, the following week, Karen Kimsey Sword is gonna bring on a franchisee um, from Gail, Dale Carnegie that's a second mm -hmm. generation. And then the third week, we're going to have um, Ray's daughter, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We're going to be recorded that week because it's a holiday. Um, but she's very actively involved in his Molly Maid. So I think it's going to be a great series just talking about the different and varied experiences of all of these young people coming up with their families and franchising. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And without further ado, I really mm -hmm. cannot wait. It's been... Um, a really big moment for me after I was introduced, Jerry actually introduced me to, um, I'm gonna call you the father of franchising, Mr. <laughs> or Dr. Dr. John Hayes. <laughs> because, um, you know, John, it's such a pleasure to have you on. And um, 
you know, you you've been in franchising. Actually, it, it we have here in 1979. You were yeah. a professor at Temple University. Yeah. And you were doing some marketing and public relations for a local franchisor. I didn't even know they were doing it in 1979. Yeah, they were. Holy smokes. Okay. And then you've you've written all kinds of different books. You've been involved with several different concepts in fran as a franchisee and franchisor. And have been involved for over 25 years, taught the A to Z's of buying the franchise. Um, you've done symposiums. I can't, I love the title of this book. You can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't teach my kid to ride a bike in the front yard. <laughs> and so that is such a cute title. I love it. I, and I have not seen that book, so I have to I have to get a hold of that one. And start small, finish big. Fifteen key lessons to start and run your own successful business. That was with Fred DeLuca. That's that's got to be a really good book there. And um, you've been involved with Subway restaurants. I mean, what have you not done? A lot of things. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, the latest adventure, really, we should talk about this, and we're so excited to to be a part of this now, is the latest and greatest franchise hot seat. Yeah, that's been exciting. We've got uh, season three coming up, and happy that you're going to be part of that. Thank you. I'm excited too. And if for those of you who don't know what Franchise Hot Seat it is, it's very similar to a Shark Tank uh, type setup. Only these are uh, emerging brand franchisors who are coming to pitch their franchise uh, system, looking for support and funding and so forth. Um, very similar to what a new emerging business would do um, on the Shark Tank. Did I describe that well enough, John? Right. Did... Yeah, that's good. Okay, right. good. good. So let's get on to the interview. I'm so excited to have you well, here. Well, Kristen, yeah. we've got to introduce our students. I know I wanted to get there. <laughs> okay, good. I was <laughs> No, I was I was gonna cue you up right next, I promise. Okay, good. I just want to make sure we didn't forget. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. We have with us and with John, Victoria Stalter. Um, she is a junior at Palm Beach Atlantic University studying business with a newly added concentration in franchising. Uh, she says this semester she took the principles of franchising course, not knowing anything at all about the subject. Um, she was just looking for an elective. And within the first week of her class, she found that franchising is something she's passionate about and knows that she wants to participate in her, in her future career. Being in the course, she's been given so many opportunities, include being a part of this podcast, as well as becoming an intern for Home Run Franchising. So, Chris, you want to tell us about Reed? Yes. So Reed, who is, I just said to him, oh my gosh, I had to do a triple take because he looks like my little brother. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's my brother. How did he get on TV or how did he get on this podcast? Because I didn't invite him. But Reed, we invited. Reed is a senior um, at Palm Beach Atlantic University. He's studying biz business management, obviously with a concentration in franchising. And uh, where are you planning on going? So as a sophomore, he heard from mutual friends about um, the franchising program. And you originally were interested, I'm sorry about this, my computer's just absolutely freaking out. Um, but you had some preconceived notions about fast food. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay, you'll have to get a little deeper on that because I'm really interested. I always have some preconceived notions about it too. Um, but then I look at some of the financials and I go, oh, well, hey, that's not such a bad gig after all. Um, and that looks like exactly that you were entirely wrong as well. So that's good. Um, so you're going to finish up in December. The Titus Center gave you the opportunity to learn about um, franchising like no other place in the country could offer. I agree. I think they have the best system and by far the most developed one. And you're being led by one of the best in the system. Um, and very nice. I'm seeing right now. I apologize for um, stumbling here. But you got to go to this uh, franchise springboard, which one of our partners um, was also there, Andrea Mundy. She was there as a speaker. So that's awesome. And you're going to be an intern for UFG, the United Franchise Group. So I think that's awesome. And that's one of the big things we want to talk about is the partnership that the Titus Center has had for students with all of the brands in franchising, getting all of you um, students the opportunity to go out and actually do internships and help with jo job placement as you graduate. So welcome to Pillars of Franchising, and we're so glad to have you all here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you. 
So who would like to start? Reid, do you want to tell us about your experience with the United Franchise Group? Yeah, I'd love to. So just to backtrack a little bit, you know, I did find out about the Titus Center for Franchising through a couple mutual friends here on campus. Didn't know much about it. Like you mentioned, I had some preconceived notions that, you know, it's mostly fast food and things like yeah. that. But much like Tori here, I took the first class and really kind of fell in love with the concept of franchising from both ends. And then I had the opportunity to do my internship at United Franchise Group, which was, I started last January, actually. Got to work with them all summer long as well, full-time, and actually got offered a full-time job upon graduation here in December. So that's where I'll be headed back to. Very excited to be able to do that with them. They've taught me a lot, but definitely had my foundation here at Palm Beach Atlantic University through uh, Dr. Hayes and credit a lot of what I know to him and excited to take that out into the real world here soon. Can you tell us what you're going to be doing for them? Yeah, so I will be a franchise development representative. So awesome. this summer, I you know did a lot of those initial calls to people who were inquiring about our brands at United Franchise Group, all uh, the ones that we have there. And then I'll also do some first webinars with people to kind of just give them the basics about the brand, really tell them about what we offer and who we are. And then I will pass them along to somebody else who can kind of go more in depth, maybe somebody who's actually based in their area of the country who can go meet with them personally and things like that. So really just sharing the, the basic information with people about our brands and something that I found a lot of passion in and excited to continue to do that. Awesome. Tori, how about you in your internship? What was one of the most interesting things that you've learned so far in this whole industry? Yeah, so um, uh, in from my internship, I've learned basically that um, uh, what was the question that you asked about the... Like with your internship in this program, what's some of the most interesting things that you've learned about it? From the program itself, I've learned a lot. I've learned... Uh, that basically that franchising is like the safest way to do business. Before coming into it, I didn't really know what it was at all, just like a few months ago. So um, it's really just been cool to learn about that. And from my internship, it's been nice to like get like real world experience. I've never, I've always been really wanting to learn like what business actually is like. So um, yeah, it's been really cool. And I'm like very blessed to have learned any, like everything that I've learned from. So Tori, was business ownership on your radar before this? Yeah, I've always wanted to like do business, but um, I'm happy to found that like um, franchising is like the safest way to do it. So John, how many people total have you graduated so far through your program? So in the first five years of Titus Center, about 30 students have graduated. Okay, great. And of those students, uh, five of them are franchisees. Okay. And about um, a dozen of them are employees at mostly franchisor locations, but a couple for franchisees as well. Excellent. Excellent. Now, if I remember correctly, when we met a couple of weeks ago, you told us that of the four that are franchisees, you actually have someone who owns two brands already. Yes. One of our uh, graduates became, well, while he was still a senior, uh -huh. which was last January, then he graduated in May, he bought a uh, Patch Boys franchise. Uh -huh. And then when he graduated in May, I think in July, he, with another group of investors, became a franchisee in LA Mental Health. So wow. he's out there as a... Uh, multi-concept franchisee already. That's awesome. So yeah. how, how often do you connect with him? Does he reach out to you for advice? Oh, yeah. And thoughts? yeah, I talk to him just about every week. That's um, yeah, because uh, he'll probably buy more franchises as well. But oh, yeah. he's got regular startup issues that he's dealing with and franchise or franchisee issues that he deals with. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, because both of those brands are still emerging, right? They are. Yeah. Ellie's an interesting one. We had them on the show, and I really like that concept. 
and I like what they're doing and there's such a need for it. So it's very interesting. I'd, I'd love to learn more about his business and how, how yeah. he's doing with that. So Reed, where do you see yourself going now? You're graduating. What's your plan? You're going to go to UF, UF um, United Franchise Group. You're going to be doing some development. What's the next five to 10 years look like for you? Well, really, I'm excited to work in any aspect with UFG. I really believe in what they're doing over there. So I'm excited to kind of test out some different things and see what my long-term career will be. Uh -huh. uh, I definitely see that in franchising and see a future with UFG. So just excited to keep on, you know, continually learning from the people around there and kind of expand on my knowledge that I've learned here at Palm Beach Atlantic. Awesome. So do you live down there near their headquarters in, Flo in Florida, right? Is that where they are? Yes. Yeah. So my family's based in Sarasota, Florida, which is about three okay. hours away. Yep. And then I live here on campus and plan to, you know, live here for the foreseeable future. Okay. Awesome. I like everyone to know where you are in case they want to hit you up and steal you away, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure it does. Yeah. So, Tori, um, you're, you're newer in the process at this point. What, by watching the people who have come before you in this franchising emphasis at Palm Beach Atlantic, what, what does that do for you in terms of, of optimism about job security or, as you've said, the safety of, of working in franchise as a business owner? What kinds of things do you see that have convinced you that this is the route for you? Yeah, so I've seen like quite a few of like um, some of my classmates just like getting jobs and internships. It seems like even like since the beginning of um, our principles of franchising class that the internships have just been like rolling out. So like almost every single person in our class has like gotten a, a, an opportunity to get one. So. Yeah. I have to tell you, Elizabeth and I were just down there as we had shared with all of you on the show um, this couple weeks ago when we were on, I think we were heading that way then. Um, but it was so exciting to be in that class, John, for the board meeting for our, for, our, um, for our speaker there. And the room was packed. And it was like, all, I mean, there was no room. There were kids sitting on the floor to listen to her talk about the fifth P in marketing. And I was right. like, that's really nice. And it, it's such a beautiful campus. And for people out there who are in franchising, whether you're a franchisee, franchisor, franchise supplier, I mean, they contact you, right? If they're looking for students in franchising that. Oh, yeah. And I get calls every week. Franchisors will call and say, we really have a, a need for whatever. And uh -huh. we heard about your program. And do you have a graduate who we could interview? And uh, the difficulty, there are a couple of things. First of all, if you're not a member of my advisory board, uh, that's really a benefit reserved for our advisory board, meeting mm -hmm. our students and having the first opportunity to hire them. Yeah. And generally, our students will get two or three offers at the time of graduation. Reed did his, his internship last January with UFG, and they liked him immediately, employed him during the summer and said, mm -hmm. you're going to graduate in December. We're, we're offering you a full-time position. Wow. Uh, in other cases, students will get a couple of offers. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not unusual because, you know, there's such great demand. Where do you find a student with a degree in maybe marketing or finance, accounting or management, political science, communications, and they also know about franchising? Yeah. That doesn't happen. But yeah. that's my student. Right. And so there are great opportunities for them. What I think is interesting is that, you know, franchising continues to grow. And I think more and more people continue to see franchising is just as um, just as she said, it's a safe way to go into business. Right. And so I would think that you continue to get more and more calls and more and more students become interested yeah. in the program. Do you see the the. Um, interest in your program continuing to grow? Yeah, we have more than 60 students now. Okay. And we only have 600 students in our business school. Most of my students come from the business school. So we're a small private university. And uh, the the uh, we don't go out and we don't have the money to go right. out on a broad basis and uh, recruit at the, the, the high school level. So nobody comes to Palm Beach Atlantic University with the idea that they're gonna study franchising. Until next fall, there's actually a student coming, uh, Thomas Scott, 
a member of our advisory board, and he is the president of uh, Home Run Franchising, where Tori uh, got an internship this semester, the first internship there. And he has a son coming in the fall to study franchising. That'll be our first student who's coming to study franchising. Students come here to study business or any topic in arts and sciences. And Uh uh, then they discover franchising like Tori and Reed did. They didn't come for that. And then they they get hooked. If they get into principles of franchising, they get hooked. Yeah. And um, that's how it happens that john because you have two students here who before they came into principles of franchising didn't really have a clue about franchising no. so what are you saying in that class because the title in and of itself does not lend itself toward thinking that you're going to recruit a ton of franchising <laughs> students right. so what is it that you get them you get them in there you've got a captive audience how are you yes. um, your enthusiasm is contagious but how do you sell them on this that, that you have these two who are now you know dedicated yeah, and I think they would tell you that I don't sell them. I just <laughs> tell you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of franchise. Yeah. So I, I don't sugarcoat it. I don't make it sound like, okay, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Mm-hmm. But I do explain that if you want to go into business for yourself, you need to look at franchising. Mm-hmm. Because the whole concept of franchising being a method of distribution, franchising being systemized, Franchising being someone who takes a, a business, uh, creates the system around it, and then replicates that system with other people who want to be franchisees. Now, that might not attract everybody. If you're very entrepreneurial, you might feel uh, restricted by franchising. But if you're not so entrepreneurial, but you're a little entrepreneurial, you see this as a great opportunity. Sure. So franchising sells itself. Really. Yeah. That, that's very interesting because it, it, when you said that, I realized, you know, I came into franchising thinking, you know, in my corporate world, I acquired all these skills, right? Yeah. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do with those skills. And I wasn't really that creative in terms of like had a business idea, but eh, I wasn't really confident in myself. And so I opened this yeah. franchising magazine and that's how I found something. Now, if, if we ask uh, Reed and Tori, do you see yourselves, both of you, do you see yourselves as people who are going to go out there and develop a business to be franchised? Do you think you'll be people who will go and join an existing franchise system as franchisees? Or do you think you'll work within a franchisor's system that's already there? Where do you see yourself fitting in in the future? Yeah, I can answer that first. Um, just to speak a little bit on Dr. Hayes' point, I really do like how franchising can benefit both the franchisee and the franchisor. You know, it, it's a it's a good model there that I didn't know beforehand. And I see myself more working on the franchisor side and in corporate, but I can totally see why somebody would want to be a franchisee as well. Definitely a lot of money to be made there. Build something for yourself. So that's just kind of where I see myself, but I can see why people would want to be in any part of the business and franchising as there's definitely a lot of opportunity in every aspect. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Tori? Yeah, um, I'd be interested in doing both. But as the franchisee, I would, um, I just like how it's like the system's already there. So it's like successful. Also, I also really would want to be a franchisor because um, even now with my internship, um, how run a friend Home Run Franchises is like building up like four brands right now, two of which are the um, is Up Closets and the other is The Lighting Squad. So I've been able to see like firsthand what it takes to like build up a brand. And I'm very interested in doing that as well. Awesome. Well, you do should you have a do you have a business idea already. I do not. OK, <laughs> you got time. I was just curious if you had something <laughs> in your back pocket. Yeah. I had one one day and somebody took off and run it and franchised it. And I'm like, oh, see, I should have just ran with it. <laughs> one of those dog wash ideas. I gave up on it too soon and now it's all gone. So, One of my <laughs> students uh, a couple of years ago when he was 19 years old and he was in Principles of Franchising. And he announced that he was doing uh, outsourced uh, services for businesses and that he was making $10,000 a month. And I thought, wow, this... Mm-hmm. 
he, he's exaggerating or something's wrong. Well, yeah. uh, it turned out he was doing exactly that. I introduced him to Ray Titus during one of our advisory board meetings. And Ray then hired this young man to test his concept over something like a four or five month period. And during the pandemic, Ray and that student created a new franchise called Prevere, which is uh -huh. out there today. It's no longer a UFG concept. They sold it to a franchisee. But my, my student, before he even graduated, had the opportunity to create a new franchise from the ground up and wow. see it sold. Yeah. Interesting. That's very cool. Students here get a lot of opportunities that they're not going to get any place else, either yeah. to, to work in a, uh, a corporate office as with a franchisor to see what that's all about, uh, to see how you find franchisees, train and support franchisees. But they also get to work with multi-unit franchisees, too, who, uh, who will put them through their experiences as this is what it's like to become a franchisee. And these, right. these are amazing opportunities that, you know, until recently, students didn't have this opportunity anyplace. Sure. Well, if, if either of you had anything to say to um, the younger, your, your generation, you know, like my kids are getting ready. My son is getting ready right now to um, start sending out applications for colleges. Why would you tell them or what would you say to them if they're considering going or, or maybe they're just considering a business school? What would you tell them about um, PBA and the Titus Center? What would your commercial be? Um, I would say like uh, you can't really get uh, what PBA offers anywhere else. I've just had so many experiences that like you can't get at, like a big state school. That's what I would say. Awesome. Yeah, that definitely attracted me to PBA as well. It was the smaller environment, getting to know your teachers personally, like uh, Dr. Hayes. He'll be able to connect you with a lot of people as well, but there's a lot of other professors that would do the same. So if franchising you know, isn't for you, it's still a great business school that can get you a lot of connections in West Palm and around the country. That's awesome. That's great. Well, I have to tell you guys, I am super excited. And the one thing I think um, for you, Dr. Hayes, that Every time we talk, and, and certainly when we engage with some of your students while we were down there and today, I mean, it just, you can feel the passion and excitement in people. And, you know, when you start talking franchising and all these different models, right, my mind just starts going crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, well, what about this? And what about that? And it, you know, you kind of right. bounce all over with all these different concepts and ideas. And I think that is wonderful for these students as they're about to go out into the world to see all the different opportunities that they have just waiting for them. Yeah. So um, I know Elizabeth has one more question, but the last question I have for you is what do you do now that you have, you know, we've talked before, we know that we have listeners out there in the UK, we've got, you know, other countries that want to get into franchising. How do we help those countries get introduced to franchising. Yeah, well, we are working on that. In fact, uh, middle of this month, I'm meeting with a university in the United Kingdom that wants to bring Titus Center education to that university. Right after I saw you at our advisory board meeting, I left the next day for Mexico. There's a university in Cancun that wants the Titus Center to come there to teach franchising. And for the last year, I've been talking to people uh, in the Middle East I lived in Kuwait for seven years. Franchising is very popular there. Mm. So there are opportunities for us to reach out. Plus, we are going to roll out our online educational program for uh, professionals who want to get a franchise education, but they're not in Florida. So they right. can't do it Palm Beach Atlantic, but they could do it online. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited to see that. And obviously, we're here to help you in any way we can. Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to wrap up with, um, we let Tori and Reed give their commercial. John, I wanted to give you the opportunity to give yours and, and specifically touch on, they both mentioned the connections that they have through the Franchise Center and through you. And the, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the advisory board and what kinds of connections you are able to navigate for these students that, that is unique to Palm Beach Atlantic and to you. 
and then finish up by giving us your contact info so that if students are interested or people are interested in being on the advisory board, they can find you. Sure. Well, we have, uh, since you were here, we've added three more advisory board members. Yeah. Uh, so we have mm -hmm. 70, uh, we're, we're closing in on 75 advisory board members represented by about 58 companies. And uh, our advisory board meets twice a year on campus. And one of the big benefits is they meet our students, as you know. Uh, students come and sit at the same table with advisory board members. Advisory board members come into the classroom to speak to our uh, students. Uh, that's a big part of what Titus Center is all about. It's connecting. Franchisors who, and franchisees who are looking for talent, franchise talent, are going to find it here at Palm Beach Atlantic University. My job is to be that facilitator. So it's, it's not the only part of my job because I teach as well. And I do a lot of other things to build the center, but nothing more important than bringing my students together with that advisory board. And I plan to continue growing the advisory board at least to 100. And uh, it's easy to get in touch with me. We're at TitusCenter.com. So it's easy to go find me. And I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm all over social media. Not difficult to track us down. And then I'll, I'll let uh, Reed and Tori talk about their experiences. Go ahead, Reed. What, what do you want to say about you know, what Titus Center is offering and what people will find here? And yeah, well, like I said, that small classroom environment is definitely huge. And then having those connections as well. But really just kind of bringing to life the classroom as well. Dr. Hayes has brought in so many guest speakers, I can't even keep track of them all. But people who are experts in the industry from franchisees to franchisors to really just have a, a Q&A with the students in the classroom, which is you're not going to find that anywhere else. So definitely something I've appreciated there. And yeah, I guess my contact information would be just Reed Miller on, on LinkedIn. You can find me there. Awesome. Um, yeah, so the just just like what Reed said, the all the, the guest speakers coming into the class, um, you can't really get like go. You can get that in another school. Um, just everything that uh, the fran just learning all about franchising and uh, what else do we? Are you talk about the relationships you're building, Tori? The relationships. So yeah, it's like getting to meet all these the uh, guest speakers and talking with them. Um, yeah, it's just cool to hear what they have to say and like their experiences and uh, yeah. Thomas Scott was one of our speakers and he's a member of our advisory board. And while he was here, he announced that he would create a remote internship if we had students who were interested. And Tori interviewed and got that internship. Awesome. And so she'll have an opportunity to work with home run franchising full time if she wants to do that or to buy a franchise if she has an interest in doing that. That's amazing. Perfect. And, you know, I'll tell you, Elizabeth and I actually made a connection while we were there, too, I should mention. Um, if you recall, we were talking about the Dallas Initiative, the, the yeah. interview that you had, right, with uh, Carlos White. Yes. And the initiative that they're doing with the mayor of Dallas to introduce franchising to the underserved community right there in Dallas. And so we were able to um, hook Carlos up with some of the additional people that we knew through Neighborly. Oh, great. Yeah. And we're working on hooking them up with some people that we knew, know through one of the banks that Jerry knows and that we know. And so that's really how things happen, right? It's about the networking. It's about the relationship building. And, you know, these students may not realize it today yet just how powerful that type of networking and relationship building is as you move forward in your careers, but it really is invaluable. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We, we so appreciate having you take time out of your days to be here. Um, it's been wonderful seeing you and I can't wait to watch you as you continue to grow in the franchise community. And really uh, from my perspective, there's not a day that goes by that I don't learn something new. Yeah. And thank you for having us. This has been a great experience and we look forward to uh, uh, helping send the link out to people in our network who will want to see what our students are about and what we offer yeah. at uh, the Titus Center. Well, we'll look forward Absolutely. to having you on here a lot more often, John. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
Best of luck. Hey, franchise owners. How's your local marketing? Do you feel like you could use some help keeping up with your social media posts and comments and reviews? Do you wonder if you could be doing more to attract local customers? Are you able to identify new movements to your local area? At Westvine, we help franchisees like you reach more local customers through digital marketing. With daily monitoring, creative content, and ad placement, and customer data intelligence, we'll get your business in front of the people who want your products or services. We also work with franchisors who need an agency to handle the digital marketing for all of their locations. If you're ready to reach more local customers, give us a call at 805-265-5440 or visit us at westbine.com. That's 805-265-5440 or westbine with a y dot com. Elizabeth. You did, but you know what? I was prepared, except I didn't know if I was coming on right now or later. So I was a little <laughs> surprised to see it come on. At least I remembered to unmute. <laughs> hey, how about Dr. John Hayes? You, you just can't do any better than that. Dr. John is phenomenal. I think he's doing an amazing job with franchising uh, with the younger generation, you know, starting in college. Yep. You can see from the results, uh, those are quality kids and they're uh, they're getting out in internships and getting offered jobs right away. So oh, I look at it as really expanding on the franchising world, but also giving students a path to a job that they, you know, they don't spend a lot of time looking for. They're getting recruited. Well, and that's the thing, you know, um, there aren't a lot of universities out there that will say, hey, listen, you can... You can virtually guarantee that you will have opportunities for work when you graduate. I mean, it just it doesn't. Well, Kristen, I, I, I'm a small piece of franchising and I'm already looking down the road a couple of years. And if I can figure out a way to incorporate one of them into my organization oh, or sure. two of them, depending on, you know, how many brands I'm into at that time or something. So, uh, and I'm a very small piece. So if you broaden that, there's demand yeah. for those students across the across the board. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and the thing is, I like the fact that they are getting experience from really all sides of franchising, right? It's they're getting the franchisee side, they're getting the franchisor side, they're getting a the supplier side. So when they come to you, whatever capacity your business is, they're pretty well-rounded students. And the great thing as we start to talk well, about empowering the next generation is that these kids are the next generation and they're already kind of educated in franchising. So, you know, similarly to the next generation that we are growing, homegrown, so to speak, they've got an even different perspective and education. In it. So it's really kind of this interesting dichotomy that we have going on. Well, you know, that's true because uh, the next three weeks, we've got the second generation uh, franchisees coming on to be interviewed. And, you know, as you said, they're homegrown. They've learned under their parents in a lot of cases, but hopefully brought, you know, some college uh, education with them and maybe business or something like that to help complement what the parents are giving them. And yeah. you, you're right on a dichotomy, right? These youngsters coming through John's program are learning the back room part of it and kind of the overview of it. Uh, which sometimes second generations don't have because they've been so laser focused on one business that yeah. they don't understand the bigger picture about it. So it's going to be interesting for me to track this over the next few years and see, you know, where these youngsters go to. I mean, John's story of the one that already owns two brands. I mean, think yeah. about that. You just do the math. Here's a person that's in their mid twenties. Uh, own first off owns their own business. Not many. Yeah. People in the twenties own a business, so he owns he or she. I guess I don't know which gender it is, but it they is. own two franchises. Uh -huh. And and I thought it was very telling that John was uh, willing to share with us that you know there were some issues between the franchisor and and this student slash franchisee yeah. because that's a learning experience. We've all been there. Yep. Uh, and when you learn it in your twenties. You know, and, and what is that old saying? If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Uh -huh. So if you learn it in your 20s, it's going to make you just a powerhouse franchisee. Oh, for the yeah. Next 
here 35 years. Yeah. Well, and I think what's interesting is both of those brands that that individual's involved in um, are interesting brands to me. One, because I, I, I they're on my radar for one reason and one because they're on my radar for another reason. And so it's 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 very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to that. In a couple of weeks, I go down there for the franchise hot seat and I cannot wait to see if I can hook up with this person because I'm I'm would love to get an interview with them as a student, as a young person who's delved into two brands. First of all, what were you thinking within a year? You have two brands. Are you crazy? Right. <laughs> and how's it going being that young? And now you've got it all hanging out there. You've got some investors with the second brand. He made that a point, right? So he's using some OPM, which is good. And what does the structure look like? And what are some of these issues with emerging brands? I mean, you'd make a great interview for us to kind of talk to him. The, the issues that he's facing are going to be different than the issues that say, Sam, your daughter is going to be facing right now. With, with Absolutely. With so, Absolutely. And, and as you said, he's got it all on the line, even though he's got some investors, it's, it's, uh, you know, he's where the buck stops. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, these issues he's got between him and a franchise or that's normal. Uh, when you're young, maybe you're not as prepared in many cases to deal with that, but because of his, um, time with John at the Titus Center for franchising and his time uh, with connections. We haven't really touched on that, but you were just down there. I was down there in the spring for the, uh, uh, for the board meeting or whatever they call it. And mm -hmm. the opportunity those kids have to connect with franchisees and franchisors from all kinds of brands, all kinds of statuses as far as big or small or emerging or whatever yeah. the case might be. And to just, have that that huge amount of knowledge and experience and those kinds of things they can tap into when this young man goes out and he's got two brands and there's problems he doesn't just have john to call but he's got hundreds of people that have probably met him or touched base with oh. him sometime in the past that he can reach out to yeah yeah and i think that's like i told them the the, the power of networking and relationship building i don't think most of them understand what that means or the really the weight of that right now but it, it, it will come very become very obvious to them when they need it to be oh without a doubt. <laughs> they, they will have heard through their education and their connections they would have heard a lot of horror stories or issues from the past that are learning experiences that they won't have to go through now because yeah they learn from somebody else that went through it. And in franchising, as a franchisee in particular, you don't have a lot of time to learn a lot of those things the hard way because each one of them costs you time and money and there's only so much of that to go around as a, as a new franchisee. So if you can skip a lot of that because of the experience, that's phenomenal. And I thought it was very telling that uh, Tori, one of the first things she said was she learned that franchising was a safer way to get into business than uh, the normal way, the, you know, bricks yeah. and mortar way. And for somebody who is, she's a junior, she's only been in John's classes for a short period of time. For her to have taken that piece, that'll save her lots of headaches down the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I know my son has plans. He wants to go on to um, a bigger school and he, he envisions being in the mountains and all these other visions that he has. But, you know, he doesn't realize it, but my plans for him is to get into a program <laughs> like the Titus Center so he gets some of that franchising experience on top of his business degree because I need him to understand it because he's the one most likely and his personality fits best to take over my business, right? And so, and the other two aren't really interested, you know? So, well, and as somebody that's been through that a couple times already, um, generally these youngsters have to discover it on their own. You, you can't force them into it or pigeonhole them. Um, and I think you touched on this earlier when you were talking to John. Uh, and I talked to a lot of first generation franchisees who have brought in second generation. In almost every case, it was the second generation either going out into corporate America for a year or two and discovering that's not as much fun as they thought it was when they get skipped over for a, you know, a promotion or they're not making as much money. And then they look at mom and dad who are you know, kind of working their own schedule, yep. uh, traveling a lot because um, you can, you know, have a little more free time, probably making a real income 
And then they compare that to their trajectory and they're like, you know, you know, going and working for mom and dad might not be the worst thing. And if I can buy that someday, yeah. that takes care of me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, and, and so, I did. It was so funny. You know, and one other thing. Go ahead. Sorry, I couldn't tell if my, if my computer was acting up or what, but. Um, and the way that Reed was so similar to my brother, his answer was also very similar to what my brother would say. He's like, well, you know, I work for corporate. And, and, and I thought, well, you say that now until you realize that when you're in corporate, you're still working for the man. But when you're a franchisee, you're working for yourself. And if you yeah. want to kick off and go golfing, you go. If you're working for the man, you might not be able to do that. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, you, you and I both know you're still going to work your hours. You might just do them nights and weekends, but you can yeah. get away during the day and you can't do that in a corporate job. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think about these kids going through John's program down there. And, you know, I just met a young man who bought out the founder of a, a small business that needed to be franchised, but the founder had no interest in franchising uh. and was a little bit burnt out from starting it up a bricks and mortar. And now, uh, that franchise, this guy's owned it for uh, less than a year, and last month sold 78 licenses. Wow. So he took something that was going to be one location in California, and now he's aiming to take it nationwide, and he's exploding. He, like many emerging brands, he can't keep up with the back office stuff, so he's you know kind of looking for some help on that. But again, uh, John's people could work with him uh, as an intern, uh, mm -hmm. Might be somebody he could pick off to work for him full time later on. Yeah. Help grow, and this brand and is exploding because one young, probably uh, 30, 32, saw the value in it. You know, so yep. it was phenomenal. Yeah, I think this the second generation, third generation um, topic. You know, I I hope people don't just think, oh, snooze fast, second, third generation. No, really, there is a lot to this that can in the next 15 to 20 years franchising really i think in a lot of ways will evolve right it's because and i don't mean at its core necessarily but the some of the brands you see some of the services that you see you'll see a lot more tech stuff and and that stuff like I'm not a tech person, right? I even have an Apple and I don't know how to use it and it's all pictures, <laughs> right? And so but my kid is like, Mom, I don't understand how you can't figure that out. It's a picture, right? So he'll be the next generation of the cool stuff that people are franchising, as John had alluded to at one point. And and we'll all be, you know, out to pasture somewhere. Well, I'm some would argue I'm already out to pasture part of the time anyhow, but uh, <laughs> that's because um, you live on a farm. Yeah, I know. But you know the thing is, even with our kids, uh, they are so they look at the world and of course the world of business differently than you and I do because yeah. we just had to make things work. Well, now they're working. There's processes and systems in place. You don't have to, you know, really worry much about the day to day stuff, and that mm -hmm. gives these kids with a different look on uh, a different perspective and more technologically based education to look for shortcuts or opportunities or something like that to not only blow up your business and expand it, but maybe find the next business through your business, either as a vendor for something that we don't currently have or a support group or something like that, or yep. even that other business that you could spin off that is a is a niche thing that's not being supported anywhere else right now and they go well duh why didn't we think of that let's just go start our own and it turns into a whole other franchise so uh, i do agree with you i think there's going to be a lot of changes in the next 10 to 20 years yeah it, it will also require the existing franchisors and their systems to elevate to the next level too right? well you know what we're going to see too brands are going to mature and when you look at any brand Let's just say a brand that right now is growing in the United States. There's only room for so many locations for that brand. Yeah. Right. So when they get to that point, they they might have operations in other countries by that time, but they're usually run kind of as a sideline. They've got their own management team and stuff like that. Well, the group responsible for the United States in this scenario, they've got to look for other ways to continue yeah. to grow and get stronger and better. And I can tell you from the brands I deal with, 
Uh, they're looking to the second generation to come to them with all of these ideas for where to go when they reach that point. Because in order to add more revenue and, and maybe even squeeze in some more locations or an ancillary brand or something like that, they've got to evolve too. So franchisors will evolve. Franchisees are already evolving right now, bringing in second generation and, and seeing where your organization goes. And I want to tell you, and we talk about this all the time for the for the listeners. If you want, if you're thinking about being a franchisee, it's the single best way to create generational wealth and a path for you and your kids and your grandkids to have a different life than you've got right now. And I will tell you from experience, because all of you know this, uh, it took me 20 years to go from researching a franchise to becoming a franchisee, and I lost a lot of time. My friends that did this earlier in life, like the kids we're talking about from Titus, are in a completely different situation, and those kids will be in a different situation. So uh, do not wait. Again, as we always say, you've got us as as uh, right. uh, peers and consultants and so on, so don't think you're on your own, and take a look at it because it will change the lives of you and your children without a doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remember, now is actually probably a really good time. Speaking of time, Jerry, we got to pay the bills. Go do it. I'll see you later. All right. See you next week. Thank you so much. See you. As usual, thank you for joining Pillars of Franchising. We appreciate every single one of you. Um, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors, the Titus Center for Franchising at Palm Beach Atlantic University. You can find them on the college's website. Also, Franchise Show 247, which can be found at FranchiseShow247.com. And we couldn't do it without our sponsors, and we appreciate their support. Don't forget, we love to have call-in guests. Our number to call in is 323-580-5755. That is 323-580-5755. If you have questions for our guests or for any of our Million Dollar Mentors, we welcome you to call in at any time on the show. We will do our very best to answer your calls. Stay tuned. More coming up. Well, hello. Well, so, hello, Ray. So Fred says to me last week, he says, let's let's do, do a new segment. I said, sure, what do you want to do? He said, well, let's do uh, Pillars, Pillars with Ray. Confusing, said, isn't okay. it? But yeah, but he didn't say you're going to follow the father of franchising who's a doctor. I mean, how do you how do you follow that? <laughs> so do you remember the first episode uh, episode of Pillars we did with Larry Broughton, Broughton and he yes. was the first one on and the second person got on and said, wow, I don't know how I follow that up. And then we actually had three <laughs> guests on the, that day. And the third guest got, okay, the second guy thought he had it bad, but me, I'm the third act, so I'm really screwed. So welcome to Screwland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So here, here, here's what I want to say about finding the right opportunity. And uh, I, I think the, probably the, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, do you want to work in the business or on the business? And that's going to either open your scope up or close it, narrow it. You know, it's going to be, uh, you know, probably the one of the primary things you want to ask yourself. And then then you want to start doing due diligence. You know, wait, wait, wait. wait. Start you, get, you just jumped. What, what, what? You just jumped I, I'm up. jumping into it. You jumped. What? You went from do I want to blah, blah to that. Blah. Give a <laughs> give a non franchisee a question that. A, a chance to ask and you don't have a hat on which is bad uh, um, okay okay so go where ahead like bn so I, I thought you might say um because so i figured in this segment your pronouncements i'm going to take as personal and respond so do i want to work in the business or on the business assuming right. that right now i'm looking for a franchise and okay we will i i i would tell mm -hmm. you that one of the reasons that i personally would want to look for a franchise would be for longer for long-term growth or mm -hmm. I think Jerry would call it income diversity okay so okay. for me that means I don't want to work in the business I want to work on the business so I've answered that question what's the next one okay then then you got to do your due diligence okay in other words you're you got to look at, at all the documents that uh, that particular franchise is going to present to you and are you going to visit them? Uh, and 
what is the culture? I think one of the most important, and we talk a lot about the uh, franchise disclosure document, but I think what probably something at least as important, if not important, is what is the culture of that particular franchise? I think that's extremely important because are you going to be able to work in within that culture? And if you if you think no, that's you know not really for me, then you need to look a little further. Okay, so, so you know, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But I'm going to reel you back in. Of we've gone from I want to work on the business to looking at the culture. So I know there's about 3,800 franchisors out there in the U.S. I am mm -hmm. not going to look at the culture of every franchisor. So well, how, do I, not. how do I break it down? Yeah. Since this isn't something that I necessarily want to do, I always remember your story of you mm -hmm. wanted technology and yet you ended up cleaning toilets. So right. how do I get from being a marketing person and a tech person to cleaning toilets? Well, one of the things I've also mentioned on the show in the past is technology has burned me. So in all the jobs I've had, the job went away. All right. So what am I looking for now? I'm looking for something I can work not in the business, but on the business. I'm looking for something that is very low tech. Okay. Because I've been burned so much. So I already had some guidelines on what I want to do. It was just a matter of checking all the right boxes and going and visiting these uh, different franchises and seeing if the, if the, culture that they say they are is the same as when I go to the visit. So there's there's a lot of things that need to do. And then I, I, I'm going to kind of close this up a little bit by saying, how do you feel about it? What is your gut feeling about that particular franchise that you're going to pour in all that money? All right. So, so before you run off, there, there's so for me, there's a, another parameter that I, I want to throw in there at my age. I don't want to start a franchise, uh, a brand new franchise. I personally would want to buy an existing franchise. So can I fit that in there? Can somebody like me go out and buy an existing franchise? Sure you can. That's probably a good idea because you'll, well, you'll get a head start. Starting a new franchise from, from uh, scratch is, is difficult. And you're going to probably, I'm not going to say waste, but it's going to take a few years to get going. And uh, in my case, uh, it took about five years before I really took off with my franchise. Most franchises today, you could probably, uh, you know, get to the point where you're successful in three years. Uh, but I, I decided to plow a lot of the money I was earning from the franchise back into the business so that I could be, a, you know, a little bit more successful further down the road. So, but then, you know, those are decisions that you have to make. And one of the best parts about owning a franchise is you get to make them, not someone else. So, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with everything you said. Um, I guess where my question comes is what's the base best way to find a franchise that's already existing i guess is the the phrase i'm looking for oh i i would say uh i think i know this great group of people called the uh, pillars of franchising i would give them a call and see what they would know okay i think there is their, their phone number is up on the screen well no that's just the dial-in number dude oh so, okay yeah that ain't gonna work but um, I'm assuming that you mean they can go to the website and uh, find something out there. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be back next week where I can stump you more of yes. best ways to buy an existing franchise. Because I don't know if we've ever co covered that. And that's kind of no. near and dear to my heart at this point. So be ready for next week. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, shall we surprise Kristen and make her do the end ending live? Yeah, but, yeah, but you got to make sure that she turns her microphone back on. Okay, so we can do that. <laughs> Take us out of here, Kristen. All right, we want to thank you all for joining us on the show today with our fabulous guest, Dr. John Hayes of the Titus Center for Franchising, and his wonderful students, Victoria Stout, 
Salter and Reed Miller. Please be sure to like, share, and comment on this episode as well as any others. Thank you to Ray Pillar and Jerry Akers, our Million Dollar Mentors. I am Kristen Shelmetzi, and we'd like to also be thankful to Fred McMurray and Elizabeth Denham, our producers. Sorry as I stumble through that. And together, we are your resource for franchising success. This has been yet another episode of the Pillars of Franchising, and your dream starts here. Oh.